name's Craig Summers. I'm a naturopath, and today I'm going to teach you how to do an electromagnetic field inspection of your home using a Gauss meter. This Gauss meter measures electromagnetic radiation. So first we'll set this Gauss meter to 0 to 100, which is the top scale. And notice we're on 0 right now. In this light fixture behind me, we have a compact fluorescent bulb. Compact fluorescent bulbs do create electromagnetic radiation. Notice that as I bring the meter very close to the light, we're getting a, a pretty high reading. And we move it away from the light, just about a foot and a half away, it drops off to zero. So the safe distance to this compact fluorescent is further than a foot and a half away. Now let's come over to a regular incandescent bulb, like in this light fixture right here. And you'll notice when we bring the meter up, nothing happens. Because this type of bulb does not create any type of electromagnetic radiation at all. In this light fixture behind me, I have an LED, which are my favorite type of bulbs. And as I bring this meter up to the bulb, you'll notice that there is no field either in an LED light. Now, these are my bulbs of choice, not just because they don't create a, any electromagnetic field, but because they're very energy efficient. Regular incandescent bulbs burn a lot of electricity. Let's see what an air purifier does now. Down here on the floor, I have a HEPA air filter. And right now it's plugged in, but not on. And I'll put this meter on the machine. And you see we have a very slight field right there. Just a little bit. Let's turn the filter on. I have that set on two. Notice we pinned over 100 milligauss. When we move away, we see it's dropping off. It's still pretty high. Now, at about four feet or so, it drops down into the safe zone. You start to get closer to it, pops up again. We'll move on this direction. And you notice by the time you reach my bed, it's dropped off. So I keep this air filter at least four feet away from my bed to ensure that the electromagnetic radiation is not uh, penetrating my body while I sleep. So we'll go ahead and shut off that air filter. Needle drops down. Now let's see what an electric heater can do. Over here I have one of these oil filled electric heaters and it's on. You can see by the light there. Bring it over and you see we have a slight field right up next to it. Not that high. You get some right out of the side, but just that short distance, two feet, it drops off completely. Let's move on over now and we'll check to see what a stereo does. Well, there's a slight field right up next to the stereo. but drops off fairly quickly as you move away. How about televisions? Okay, first we'll try the television. It's off. And you notice right up against it, we have a reading of about three. Just a hair over the three mark, just above the safe zone. Let's see the back of the television. We can get back there. And we notice, yeah, there's a little bit coming out the back as well. Now let's turn her on. Bam. Needle jump way up. So now I'm up at about 100, close to 100 milligauss. Watch that needle. What's the safe distance from this machine? Well, once again, about four feet drops off. And it'll also come out that distance out of the back of the machine. Now keep in mind, that these electromagnetic fields, they pass through the walls, whether they're cement, 
steel, brick, sheetrock, glass, doesn't matter what it is, they pass right through. Another item that people use all the time are laptop computers. Now, this type of monitor, known as the panel screen monitor, is great. You notice there's nothing coming off of that monitor. And that also goes for television sets. The type of television that we just measured is the old type of set that are on their way out. People are phasing out that type of unit. The newer types are thin flat panel screen monitors and they don't produce fields. So that's two thumbs up for the new types of television. But what about your laptop? Here right on the keyboard, you notice it's very high. It's hovering up there close to 100 milligauss. And also on your mouse, high as well. What about underneath? Most people sit this device right on their legs. Well, look at that. You're up there at 100 milligauss, right under it. But as we move it away, it drops off fairly quickly. So just the distance of this laptop being on a table will protect you from the electromagnetic field. That's why I don't recommend putting laptops on your lap. Now you might say, well, you know, you have to type on this thing. You have to use a mouse. How do you protect yourself from that? Well, what I do is I use a keyboard that plugs in to the USB. And this type of keyboard, there'll be no electromagnetic field. I also use a mouse that goes into the USB. And you're not going to get anything off of this type of mouse. I don't recommend the cordless keyboards or mice because those are going to put out radio frequency as well as have an electromagnetic field. Once again, my keyboard here, very high. You move over here, you get nothing. The most important place in the house to check for electromagnetic fields is where you spend a lot of time. And with me, about one third of my life, I spend right here in this bed. So I want to make sure that this bed does not have any electromagnetic field, electromagnetic radiation. So this is the way I would do an inspection on the bed. Go over the whole entire bed, especially where your head is going to be. Now I built this house myself, and the way that I wired this wall here is I made sure there was no wires running through the wall because the wiring inside the wall could sometimes create electromagnetic fields. And if there was a wire through there, creating electromagnetic field, it would be getting my head all night long while I slept, as uh, happens to many people. Let's see what happens when we bring this Gauss meter over to this electrical outlet. And you notice right up at the outlet, we have a reading about 8 milligauss. And you move away from the outlet, it drops off really fast. So another thing we, we certainly don't want is to have an electrical outlet right behind the wall where our bed is because we'll be getting exposed to that type of radiation all night long while we're sleeping. Light switches can sometimes create electromagnetic fields. This one doesn't, but if we had a dimmer switch, the dimmer switch has a rheostat in it and that will create a high electromagnetic field. You want to be a few feet away from any type of dimmer switch that you might have in your home. So there are just a few things that you can do during electromagnetic field inspection. Ideally, you go through the entire house, you look at anywhere where someone's going to be spending a lot of time, and you make sure that there's no electromagnetic field there. Let's say you do find a high electromagnetic field near a bed, in that case, you might find another part of the room doesn't have an electromagnetic field. So you can take that bed and move it to that part of the room, just simply rearranging the furniture. Other times you might find that there's a device such as a refrigerator or some other type of unit plugged in on the other side of the wall. And as I mentioned before, the electromagnetic fields come through the wall. So if you move the device on the other side of the wall or your bed, so you have more distance between that device and where you're sleeping, that could alleviate the electromagnetic field. Other times you might have to actually go into the circuit breaker and shut 
that particular electrical circuit in order to make a very f safe area for you to sleep in. Of course, if you do that, make sure you're not shutting off anybody's refrigerator because in the morning you might have a little bit of a, a mess to clean up. I hope you learned something. Thank you very much for listening. The sun is on the rise, so open up your eyes, drinking